Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. A lot of times north of I-10 gets forgotten. Northern leaders take their concerns to the Capitol. It amazed me that she was able to pull this off. The story of the unstoppable Doralise Fontaine and her love of Louisiana. Hi everyone, I'm Andre Morrow. And I'm Natasha Williams. Much more on our top stories in a moment on this week's edition of SWI. But first, a first in one season for the Bonnie Carey Spillway. Yeah, a rapid rise in the Mississippi River from torrential rains has prompted the Army Corps of Engineers to begin reopening part of the spillway in St. Charles Parish. Remember, it had opened in late February, then closed in mid-April. This marks the second time in one flood season for the structure to open. The Corps says the Mississippi has risen six inches in the past 24 hours, and the opening will relieve stress on levees in New Orleans. Now a look at other stories making news around the state. Schools in at least one northeast Louisiana parish were closed Thursday after another round of strong storms rolled through the area. David Claxton, superintendent of Jackson Parish School, said they canceled classes to assess the damage. There was no major report of damage to the schools, but Claxton said the district was concerned, and as a precautionary measure, they wanted to keep people off the roads. Multiple trees and power lines were reported down in Ouachita Parish as severe thunderstorms rolled through the area Wednesday night. As many as 13,000 Entergy customers were without power across North Louisiana due to storm-related damage. Ouachita and surrounding parishes were under a tornado warning for a portion of Wednesday night. Trees were also reported down near the University of Louisiana Monroe campus. The governor is scheduled to tour Jackson Parish to evaluate the storm damage. Governor John Bell Edwards has announced an agreement that will give New Orleans more than $67 million for infrastructure, including the city's aging sewer, water, and drainage system. The deal was also including $26 million in annual recurring funding. That will depend on passage of legislation that includes a 1% tax on hotel rooms and a 6.75 tax on short-term housing rentals. Edwards announced the deal in a joint statement Monday with Mayor LaToya Cantrell. Cantrell has been pushing for New Orleans to get more tourism tax revenue. President Donald Trump plans to visit Louisiana next week to highlight job growth related to energy. The White House said Monday that Mr. Trump is scheduled to tour Hackberry, an unincorporated Louisiana community on the Gulf Coast between New Orleans and Houston on May 14th. The president plans to tour a shipping facility that uses trains to bring in liquefied natural gas for export overseas. The White House says President Trump will discuss how energy infrastructure projects such as Sempra's facility in Louisiana are creating American jobs. The visit will be Mr. Trump's third trip to Louisiana since he took office in 2017. On Sunday, officials with the U.S. Geological Survey recorded a 4.6 magnitude earthquake south-southeast of Buras, Louisiana, in the Gulf of Mexico. Officials say there was no threat of tsunami from the tremor. Dozens of people reported feeling vibrations from the quake Sunday evening in locations spanning from southern Louisiana to Mississippi, Florida, and Texas. The most recent earthquake recorded in south Louisiana was a 3.0 magnitude quake in Clinton back in 2010. Louisiana's community college system is creating a new two-year associate degree in cloud computing in coordination with Amazon Web Services. Governor John Bell Edwards and the Louisiana Community and Technical College System announced the collaboration Wednesday, saying it will provide new opportunities for students to get tech-related jobs. Each of the 12 community colleges will start using Amazon's AWS Educate system. Another week is in the books for state lawmakers at the Capitol, and it was quite a week. Here's a look at some of the highlights. Midway through the session, most budget plans are taking shape, but the fate of most bills are still up in the air. 
Even though lawmakers brokered a seven-year tax deal a year ago to shore up finances, budget disagreements continue. But now it's about how to spend new money, not where to slash it. There won't be a joint ticket for the state's governor and lieutenant governor after the House rejected the idea. Representative Walt Leger, a New Orleans Democrat, had proposed that candidates for the state's top two offices be chosen on a ticket like the president and vice president are. Louisiana won't become the latest state to ratify the long-stalled Equal Rights Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. State Senators Wednesday rejected a plan by Senator J.P. Morrell, a New Orleans Democrat. He hoped by adding a provision it would outlaw discrimination based on gender. The power struggle over how to regulate the state's medical marijuana program spilled into the legislature this week. Lawmakers abandoned the latest ideas of State Ag Commissioner Mike Strain for growers. LSU's Ag Center, which oversees one cannabis grower, criticized the regulations, saying it had no opportunity to voice concerns. A revamped spending plan approved by a House Appropriations Committee would give public school teachers a pay raise of $1,200 a year and support staff $600. The proposal still has to go through several steps and likely changes before becoming law. A proposal to toughen abortion laws has won support of state senators. It would ban abortion if a fetal heartbeat is detected. Senators sent the bill to the House. But the prohibition only would take effect if a federal appeals court upholds a similar law in Mississippi. State senators overwhelmingly rejected a plan to do away with the death penalty. Thirteen backed the proposal of Republican Senator Dan Clater of Baton Rouge, while 25 opposed it. We have reached the halfway point of the legislative session and leaders in the northern part of the state made a caravan to the Capitol this week. For 33 years, they've come as a group to remind lawmakers and the governor that not only are they a vital part of the state, but also are engaged in fighting to improve issues affecting their towns and cities. It's a not so subtle reminder. Hey, how are you? A meeting just steps from the Capitol. I say a lot of times, and I tell the governor this, uh, halfway kidding, but I also uh, serious too, that uh, a lot of times north of I-10 gets forgotten. I told the governor when he got elected, I said, please don't forget, there's some really, really good people in North Louisiana. Busloads of leaders making the trip to Baton Rouge from northwest, north central, and northeastern Louisiana, joining forces to ensure the needs of the people at the top of Louisiana remain top of mind for both lawmakers and our governor. This is just so important. I mean, I got a lot of stuff I need to be doing in Ruston, but this is important to, to be in front of our legislators, to make them, uh, to just remind them of North Louisiana. Mayor Ronnie Walker of Ruston is trying to literally put his city back together after a devastating tornado tore through it in late April. A 35-year-old mother and her 14-year-old son died, the twister causing more than nine million in damage. He says despite the tornado, Ruston's area universities and businesses are full steam ahead. Louisiana Tech University is doing some amazing research and work in cyber and in engineering and all of that. Uh, Grambling State University, <laughs> Rick Gallo is doing a phenomenal job as president of that university. Make sure that everybody knows that we are here. Leaders from the city of Monroe came to lobby for causes to keep their city beautiful and moving forward. We come down, we lobby our own legislators, but we also get a chance to talk to the, the legislators in other parts of the state and let them know that, uh, you know, they need to work with our guys as far as uh, uh, spreading the pie around, so to speak. So it's a good opportunity for, for us to come down and, and talk about various issues. Also, uh, not just with uh, the legislature, but other uh, parts of our state government, such as DEQ and other things that we need to talk about. Greg Smith is the executive director of the Keep Monroe Beautiful Initiative. Their mission is to keep Monroe beautiful by engaging individuals, household and businesses to take greater responsibility in improving their community and environments. Their plan is a clean, green, physically enhanced city where citizens have a strong sense of pride and concern about their environment. We have a big issue with tire dumping, that type of thing, and so we're trying to get some solutions that, that would not only work in Monroe, but statewide. So having a, a chance to talk to a secretary here or there, uh, depending on what that uh, department is, it's just a good opportunity right here. The business and education community want to come together to let our legislators know that 
they're important to us and then we want to be just as important to them. Camille Career is the Vice President of Student Affairs at the University of Louisiana Monroe. We need their support to keep our businesses, our, our educational institutions, ULM, Delta, Louisiana Tech, Grambling, all of our North Louisiana educational institutions viable. Uh, we need the funding. We've had stable funding for two years. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we've had increased funding, it's just been stable, which, is, uh, which has been good versus the cuts. So, you know, if we can continue moving forward, continue advancing higher education, investing in higher education, then we're all going to come out better. Speakers at the event coined Northern Exposure came from both sides of the aisle. Head of State Governor John Bell Edwards gave the keynote. So thank all of you for coming down. The governor telling the folks gathered from 21 parishes across the I-20 corridor of North Louisiana, our state is going in the right direction. This session is a little different than the previous ones that we've had. Uh, we're not over there talking about a cliff or a deficit. We're not talking about revenue. Uh, we're talking about how do we move Louisiana forward. Um, and this is an exciting time. And I can just tell you, uh, having, having been there since January of 2016, things are much better today uh, than they were. And leaders listening say networking across the state is key to successful leadership and cities. This is where you connect with everybody, not just Baton Rouge, but we have Shreveport, Monroe, Ruston. Michael Thompson is the former mayor of Delhi, who now works as a consultant. He says there's one reason he comes back year after year. If you don't come, you don't get. And for Renata Norman of Leadership Washita, attending the event is giving her a chance to learn even more about how our government works. I want to hear about the minimum wage standard because, of course, stacking up Louisiana against these other states and, of course, we're trying to grow our economy here. I really want to hear more about what we're going to do to uh, raise that. As Ruston Mayor Ronnie Walker talks to leaders in Baton Rouge about getting help for home, he knows his city of 24,000 has many months, even years of rebuilding to do to get back to its pre-tornado self. Now it's just that grind is going to be slow. Now what Walker says hasn't been slow is help from folks throughout the state. Strangers driving for hundreds of miles to pitch in and clean up as the city gets back on track. We'll have much more on Ruston's recovery in the weeks to come. She wrote the state song, corresponded with world leaders about world peace, ran a highly visible business. And when she died, her body lay in state in Baton Rouge. Who is she? You are about to find out. Our story begins with a letter dated April 25th, 1952 to Dora Lee Fontaine. It's from her nephew, who happens to be on an aircraft carrier in the Sea of Japan during the Korean War. Even though it's raging around him, this correspondence is not about the war itself, but about a favor. The letter reads, My dear Aunt Dora, after all this time, I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear the following news. It goes on to explain, A fellow comrade flew a routine mission over North Korea and carefully dropped all copies of your wonderful Peace March. The letter includes a hand-sketched map showing where the leaflets were dropped. Signed, Very Best Wishes, Roland Roy. That letter gives great insight into the world of Aunt Dora, Doralee Fontaine. She's a woman of drive and determination, a visionary, a musician, composer, teacher, and business leader. A woman not afraid to ask and likely not quick to take no for an answer. The peace march the letter refers to, it was a song Fontaine wrote and wanted the world to hear. Holding tight to that desire six years later, her elegant two-story home helped her realize another dream, a new business, and for the home, an official name, Fontaine House. At 838 North Boulevard in downtown Baton Rouge, just blocks from the then governor's mansion, Fontaine House would become a mecca for weddings, receptions, and other social gatherings. Longtime Baton Rouge resident Janet Rohrer remembers it well. I can remember that Mother and I went there. I think it was uh, to maybe check for a possible venue. It might have been my daughter Kathy's reception. 
Miss Fontaine was very gracious and very nice, and she explained what she offered, the services she offered. Those services were extensive. A 1958 article from Baton Rouge Society Magazine in Register writes, besides singing and playing the piano and organ, Fontaine House can help with invitations, flower and reception details, even hiring a personal maid for the bride. I don't think there's been anything left out, said Dorlise Fontaine. Present day Fontaine House still looks very much the same. It's where Baton Rouge publicist and author Ronna Gray has rented office space for more than 10 years. And when we moved in, the owners of the building and some of the other people who have had office space here told me the, that this was the Fontaine House, that it had been the house of Dorlise Fontaine and the name immediately meant something to me because my first job out of college, I worked for the Secretary of State of Louisiana, and I remembered instantly that she had written our first state song, Give Me Louisiana. Give me Louisiana, the state where I was born. At the piano is the niece of Fontaine, Carol DeCote, and that's Mary Vidros on lead vocals, her longtime housemate. She asked me to join them in singing, Give Me Louisiana. Oh, give me Louisiana, the state where I Dakota is now blind, and tongue cancer has robbed her of the ability to articulate. But it doesn't stop them from taking their act to area nursing homes, where the old songs bring smiles. Dakota herself lights up, remembering the special bond she had with Fontaine, and the musical bond. She says her aunt was never in a bad mood and always ready for a good time. I go all over the way because I didn't have a real to real machine anymore. Real to real machines. On Sunday afternoon. On Sunday afternoon, she would go visit Aunt Dora and they did real to real tapes and Dora would play the organ and Carol played the piano. Dakota says Fontaine also showed her how to make money playing the piano, a source of income, she says. And so she played her honky-tonk style at hotels and nightclubs to go with a myriad of other jobs to pay her way through LSU. Fontaine was adept at handling any number of circumstances. In a 1977 newspaper article headlined, Doralise Fontaine at 71, A Love Affair with Life, she described her loveless 29-year marriage that was said to be arranged this way. I was very fortunate that I was married to that kind of man. He made me. It was hard. If he had just given me everything, I would not have worked like I did. Defeats have their purpose. They strengthen you. We need the sunshine and the rain. One battle along the way was her fight to keep Give Me Louisiana the official state song. In the 70s uh, was when the legislature proposed changing our state song to You Are My Sunshine and Ms. Doralise Fontaine, is my understanding, went to the legislature, sitting down there for the vote, lobbying to not do away with Give Me Louisiana, and the vote to make the change failed. These are her notes from that very day at the Capitol when she tallied the yeas and nays. This piece of history and Fontaine's personal papers are all kept in the Special Collection Division of LSU's Hill Memorial Library. That letter from her nephew is here and much more. These are the original printing plates to Give Me Louisiana. And this is her composition of Let's March Together. The march was her international hymn of peace. And with it, she reached out to world leaders, celebrities, and acclaimed former first ladies. So a letter here from Eleanor Roosevelt responding to one of her letters. Melissa Smith is Hill's assistant curator of manuscripts. Dora Lees, when she was uh, one night in the summer of 48, was listening to the radio and was just all upset that while peace from World War II had been called, there was really no settlement. True. And her, out of her frustration, she wrote the, what becomes the score for March for Peace. Smith says Fontaine's papers show it wasn't long after that she heard Eleanor Roosevelt on the radio echoing similar sentiments. And so, Doralise Fontaine sends her a letter with the word, with the... Sparks are coming by. Sparks are coming by. And one thing that she mentions in her papers is that within a few days, she actually receives a letter from Eleanor Roosevelt thanking her for her contribution. 
This 1963 in register with Fontaine as cover girl features an article that says Fontaine sent more than 2,000 letters to diplomats and dignitaries around the world and received responses from 1,800 of them. Besides Roosevelt, the personal inventory at Hill has responses from J. Edgar Hoover, Generalissimo Francisco Franco of Spain, and ambassadors including one who wrote on behalf of Nikita Khrushchev, former premier of the Soviet Union. She decides to write every embassy, the UN, uh, members around of Congress the around the world, and so we ended up, through a, a donation of her papers, have all these letters from world leaders, from uh, celebrities like Bob Goulet. Again, it goes to show what a determined woman she was to get her message of peace out. And that she also writes of wanting school children to be able to sing it. She wanted to write lyrics that would be simple enough for kids to sing and for them to enjoy. And so what also ends up happening is that LSU performs the song. Uh, the song is performed before the UN. U UNESCO also has the song performed. And then school children all throughout the state are also performing at various events. So she was highly effective in her, what we would call today her branding tools. <laughs> What's your takeaway about Doralise Fontaine? I thought, what an incredible woman that she had the strength to do these things by herself and the persistence to write to so many people. I studied propaganda and, and leaflet warfare in journalism school at LSU. It amazed me that she was able to pull this off. And the letter from her nephew reporting that a naval pilot flew from their aircraft carrier over North Korea, with North Korea in the news so much today during the Korean War and dropped her peace march, hoping that something like that could bring people together was just incredible. What do you remember the most about her? Always fun. She was always fun. She laughed. And we all loved her. And we were, she was our Auntie Mame. She was your Auntie Mame? Auntie Mame. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can see that. Auntie Mame, huh? Oh, give me Louisiana, the state where I was born. <laughs> I can hear you and her playing the organ right now. Can't I can you? hear it. A year after Fontaine lobbied to keep Give Me Louisiana as our official state song, it gained company when You Are My Sunshine was added as another state song. Doralise Fontaine died in 1981 when she was 77, but as you now know, left behind details of her love affair with life. That was a wonderful story. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy doing it, man. It was really fun. Yeah. A lot of news about state songs this week. There was a chance a third official song could be added to the list. Yeah, the song Jambalaya, or some people say Jambalaya, has been talked about, but Senator Norby Chabert of Terrebonne Parish is shelving his proposal in favor of it, at least for this session. So in case you're keeping official count at home, it remains two. The state still has just two official songs. Hey, you know that this is National Travel and Tourism Week and never wanted to miss an opportunity. Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser made stops around the state reminding people about our tourism growth. He talked with business leaders in Acadiana about the Louisiana Feed Your Soul tourism brand. He also pushed staycations, staying close to home and seeing what we have to offer here. We have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. This summer you can go deep sea fishing in Grand Isle. You can take in Ruston's Louisiana Peach Festival. There are hundreds of things. And in the heart of Baton Rouge is the Burden Rural Life Museum, which emphasizes our agricultural heritage. Rex Q. Fortenberry takes us there in this Louisiana postcard.
Our thanks to Rex for those beautiful pictures and to everyone who makes our program happen every week. That is our show for this week. Remember, you can watch LPB On Demand on your phone or tablet with our LPB Anywhere app. The download is free from your app store. You can catch LPB News and public affairs shows and other Louisiana programs that you've come to love over the years. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For all of us at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Andre Morrow. And I'm Natasha Williams. Thanks for watching us. Until next time, that's the state we're in. Support comes from... Entergy provides much more than power. We support science and engineering at local schools to build a brighter path to better jobs and help prepare the next generation. Because together, we power life. Entergy. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.